Esther here with a word about one card spreads. I'll come to that in a minute. And with a new tarot deck, uh, new to me at any rate, the uh, Sheridan Douglas deck. This is a reissue of a vintage deck, a 1972 deck, which I've I've never owned. I've never owned a vintage copy of it, and I've never known owned the modern reissue. Uh, but it's super available directly from the Sheridan Douglas family. Now, here's the thing about the Sheridan uh, Douglas tarot. So uh, Alfred Douglas was an esotericist, wrote a book called uh, The Tarot, The Origin, Its Origin, Meaning, and Uses. And his partner, Joe Sheridan, right, had a son named David. And as uh, Alfred Douglas was thinking about, like, who should illustrate who should illustrate this book? He chose his his romantic partner, Joe's son. Um, and so in 1972, right, a young David Sheridan drew all of the cards. And that later became the deck, the Sheridan Douglas deck. It's still, or it is again being produced by this family. You can get it directly from them. Um, I don't know what the vintage version looks like uh, or feels like. I mean, the, the images have remained the same. I don't know what the cardstock is like. This cardstock is, it's a nice, um, it's a nice snappy cardstock, a little bit thick and definitely somewhat glossy, um, you know, nice purple backs. I don't know if the backs have remained the same. New tarot smell. It's just, I mean, this deck, I haven't played with it. I haven't shuffled it. I have just looked through it. Um, and I've known about it for a long time, but I, I thought I had to find a vintage copy until I realized, no, it's, it's been reissued, folks. And it got to me really quickly. And Alfred Douglas himself, who must be not a, the youngest camper in the world, he signed the, the lid. I wrote them. I was like, because I sent my money uh, directly on their website and I didn't get a clear confirmation back. So I emailed through the website and I said, you know, I just wanted to double check that the, the deck is still in print and you're still... And Alfred Douglas said, oh, yes, ma'am, we, we're putting a copy in the mail and I'll sign the, the, I'll sign the flap of the tuck box for you. It's so lovely and sweet. Anyway, this deck, you know, and there are walkthroughs of this. And so you probably, if you're interested, you can find lots of slow uh, flip throughs, I'm sure. But the pop colors of this deck and the, you know, quite stylized imagery. Notice the Mouse numbering, so fortitude or strength is 11, but the the images are much more Waitsmith than Mouse, except in the trump cards, where it, well, I guess it's really, it's a hybrid. I love the green of this devil. I mean, this deck, is this not is this just not the cheeriest, most delicious, yummy thing you've you've seen? It also does this thing that I find quite charming and helpful, particularly for thinking about things like tarot spreads, where I'm inviting us to think really seriously about number. Like if we're working with a one card spread or a two card spread, three card spread, four card, think about the number of cards. You know, you can get very playful with, oh, I've got a four card spread and it's a, I don't know, it's a, it's a incendiary spread about, you know, building your creativity. And this, this card in the corner here is the spark. And this card is the, uh, you know, is the fuel. And this is, and you get, get really fancy about the topics that you assign to each of the cards in your spread. You can get very clever. But if you're not thinking about number, like what is fourness in tarot? If I'm doing a four card spread, what do I already know? about fours, either through the iconographic imagery of the tarot, the way in which, let's okay, we're talking about four card spreads now. So let's just look at a deeply iconographic image of fourness, right? The four corners of the world. So if I wanted to do a world spread, I might think about, you know, what are the four corners of my world? How do I understand that? How do I see the wholeness of my world? And if I want to do a five card spread, I might say, and what's dancing in the middle? So the tarot teaches about us about number, both through the uh, coordination and assemblage of images, the way it gives us a kind of geometric wisdom in the structure of the card, 
and it teaches us about number by giving us numbered cards, right? Now, the thing about the Sheridan Douglas is it does this cool thing that, you know, that we see in the earliest complete tarot deck that exists, the 1491 Solo Busca deck. We have all 78 cards um, where the minor arcana has Arabic numerals, but the major arcana has Roman numerals. And that lets us see something also interesting about number, the way in which uh, the Roman numeral system, let's take the Wheel of Fortune and the number 10. 10 is a hugely important number in the tarot, as I've said. It's so much built around how tens fit together, aces through tens, etc. And the thing about 10 in the Roman numeral system is 10 is an X and it's an, you know, as an X, it gives us really the structure of a wheel, right? Or as Carl Jung would point out, the structure of a mandala with its four points, the structure of a world that turns, right? So it's significant that the Wheel of Fortune is 10, that this number 10 that we find so critical for the tarot in this, you know, ancient imagery of Roman numerals, tens are about what turns, right? About that place where things can turn, the wheel can turn. The place where X marks the spot, where East meets West, where there's a center, where there's a pivot point, the place where things turn. Um, the Roman numerals also show us something that's, that's true about all number, but it's more clear to us, I think, in a Roman numeral system, which is we can see the ways in which an 11 is one that's been turned. It's a 10 plus a one, right? That sense of things gets a little bit lost when we're thinking about Arabic numerals, right? Where we might think of a 10 and we go like, oh, it's just one plus zero. You know, in numerology, we're often encouraged to take our Arabic numbers, like let's say the year 2022, and we say, okay, that's two plus zero plus two plus two, and we just collapse down a big number to a single digit. So 2022, we might collapse that down if we're thinking numerologically to the number six, right? Roman numerals remind us that, you know, not all numbers, that not the only way to think about numbers about things collapsing down, that the that another way to think about number is to think about uh, the ways in which 10 just takes us one more turn. That 11 is one that's come around. 12 is two that's come around. 13 is three that's come around. So the Roman numerals help us think about the ways in which, for instance, these two cards have a relationship to one another. Does this make sense? Anyway, that digression about number, I don't want that to take away from the kind of cheerful, beautiful, delicious pop, pop snap of color of the Sheridan Douglas deck, which I think in terms of vintage uh, decks, you know, is gives, give, gives the Albano weight a run for its money in terms of, <laughs> look at that. I mean, is that, this card, right? This four of pentacles. I mean, it takes the, the four of pentacles to a whole new place. Like his, his withholding makes me think about whatever this guy is about, right? So anyway, um, the Sheridan Douglas totally delicious. I'm going to be playing with it. But I also wanted to illustrate um, three different kinds of spread that we can do with the number one. So the first and most obvious way to think about a one card spread is to think about what the aces teach us. The aces teach us about the ways in which the number one is an uh, an origin, a seed, a potential. How energy, whether it's like the kundalini energy, the coiled snake energy of fire in the wands, or whether it might be something more like, uh, uh, as always, 
<laughs> as always, I never have pulled out my cards ahead of time. Um, or the kind of fountain of bounty energy, that fullness of uh, the vessel that is the Ace of Cups, um, or the, you know, the the Ace of, of Swords, and the ways in which that card makes us think about the sheer force of, um, of ego and self and power, right? Aces are about what's at the beginning, what's the source, what's the origin, what's the, what's the gift? If we think about the Waitsmith uh, use of that imagery of the hand, the divine hand in the cloud holding the suit element. Uh, so that's one way in which one card spreads, can speak to us. We can pick a card, whatever it might be, a one card, and we can say this card, like an ace, is going to give me the seed for today. And so for today, ah, the three of cups. How is this sense of community? How is this sense of cheer, of birth, of what it means to, to sit on the brood of the day? How is that at the heart of what today is? How is today about whatever the threeness of cups brings forward? Does that make sense? So, that's one way to think about a one card spread as being about a gift or bounty. But another way, and this I've found very powerful this week, is to think about uh, a one card spread as representing the oneness that we see in the magician, right? The magician who brings together things, who brings together all the tools, who unites heaven and the earth as above, so below, right? The the card of manifestation. So I might do a one card spread and think this is a magician spread. So how is today, how is today about manifesting? If the first one was how is today, how is this card going to help me think about today as a gift or the what, what today brings? How is today about manifesting? Okay, so in today, how am I manifesting Hmm. that sense of loss and impoverishment, that five of pentacles sense that all the fish of life, all the abundance is going in the opposite direction, that everything is sunk, that everything is lost. So in, is, am I manifesting poverty? Am I manifesting impoverishment? Can I manifest its other today? How can I meet this day with this sense of bringing forward. You know, I almost want to think about that Three of Cups now and the Three of Cups, which uh, brought the sense of community from the imagery of the cups and the traditional Waitsmith imagery of the three, but really brought it into the realm. I'm looking for it now. I've lost it. Um, that brought it into the realm of growth and birth and uh and reproduction, all those things about, here it is, all those things about the three that are like, okay, we've got a partnership that's come together, and now what comes next is birth, right? So can, you know, can this sort of, the seed of today and that sense of abundance and birth, you know, how does that speak to thinking about today as manifesting a sense of impoverishment? How do I turn it around? How do I get from this to this. So my one card spreads can speak to each other from one day to the next. And I've uh, had that experience. I think we all have had that where one day's uh, card pull uh, gets echoed and, and responded to in the next day. Um, so uh, the one card sp spread as, a, as an ace spread about gift and abundance, uh, gift and uh, uh, seed and potential. And a one card spread as a magician spread about manifestation, alignment, uh, bringing together heaven and earth, creativity and creation. What am I manifesting today? Um, the, uh, the last spread that I worked on this week, and this was because I was working with a Marseille style deck, uh, and that's not unlike the Sheridan in its numbering, was to think about a strength one card spread where the oneness of this 11 is about uh, the unity of 
lady and lion. So how does today, how is my card pull today about this uh, unity of tamed and wild? And so I might ask that question of my one card spread. How is it about the unity of that which is tame and that which is wild? And I've pulled, right, the four of wands, the four of batons. This sense of artistic creativity, which is so interesting. So in this deck, this card feels more like it's about um, the coming together of, um, of artistic structure. If we think about fours as being about stability and, uh, and building and construction and uh, what is anchored and found, well-founded, uh, what is stable, what is disciplined and ordered. Um, the four of batons here seems to be less about, um, it seems to be less about, you know, that kind of sense. Well, I guess it's about, it's about building. It's about creating. Yeah. I was going to say it's less about the kind of the, the, the chuppah, that, that, that sense of celebration or home or marriage or sort of building uh, a world of uh, community and celebration of the four of wands in the Waitsmith illustration and more about this kind of artistic craft. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, brilliant as a strength card or a strength reading, right? You know, creativity requires bringing together what is tame and what is wild in us. So can we, in our artistic endeavors, can we inhabit this, the oneness of strength? the oneness of the wild and the tamed. And in fact, that sense of oneness, that is really what one card spreads, no matter how we understand them. If we think of it as an ace, kind of the finding the seed for the day, or if we think about it as a kind of manifestation, the magician spread or strength spread, um, it's all about unity, right? One card spreads are about finding unity, integration, pulling things together into their natural union, forging the unity of that which feels like it's disparate and separate. Okay, um, I think that's all I got for one card spread. That was a long video. I meant it to be short, but hopefully uh, it was fun to see a little bit of the Sheridan Douglas and to hear a little bit more about number. Oh. Yeah, let's just look at some cards. Oh my goodness. This deck, it really is kind of a, an amalgam, isn't it, of, it's out of order now, an amalgam of Wait Smith kind of imagery and stuff that feels more Mouse. You know, that's a very Wait Smithy Four of Cups. But that Six of Pentacles, for instance, might feel more like an illustration of a Marseille Six uh, rather than the Wait Smith. So it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of an amalgam. Oh. And there's another six, right? That doesn't exactly, well, maybe has a kind of youthful childhood feel to it. The nostalgia of the Waitsmith Six of Cups. Anyway, such a cool, delicious, poppy deck. Uh, a little bit sexy too. Yeah, interesting. The theme of victory, but very, very Marseille, of course, in its presentation. Okay. As is that. Wow. Okay. Now, as we move into week two of this challenge, I invite you to think about two card spreads and to think about what the, the two cards teach you. The deuces. What do they teach you about the number two? They teach us about things like duality and dichotomy, and partnership, and combining, and blending, and meeting. And if we think about the quintessential two, that is the papist or the high priestess, right? The two cards, and the number two in tarot, makes us think about otherness, makes us think about what's hidden, what's in the watery deeps, what's shadowy, what's below, what's the other, to what we tend to assume as the primary thing. So 
I invite you to think about two two spread two card spreads to think about doubleness to think about otherness to think about duality and dichotomy and see what kind of spread you can come up with this week. Is there a high priestess or papist spread that's somewhere up your sleeves? Good luck. And as always, thank you so much for your practice. Take care and toodaloo.